Hi biologists, let's start by looking at the learning objectives for this lesson. At the end of this section and following the biology syllabus, you should be able to know the components of the animal and plant cell as seen under the light microscope and describe their functions. Indicate, in both cases, the position and function of the cell membrane. What does this actually mean? What are we trying to understand? Well, you need to know the parts of the animal and plant cell as seen under the light microscope and you need to be able to describe their functions. Also, you have to be able to indicate or know the position of the cell membrane and the function of the cell membrane in each cell. Let's sort cell components by first looking at cells. Cells are the smallest unit of living organisms that show the characteristics of life. So in other words, a cell is the teeny weeniest, doonchy woonchiest part of a living thing. The cell shows the characteristics of life. You might remember the characteristics of life from before. The characteristics of life are a number of features or characteristics that living things have in common and that allow us to identify them as living. In other words, noser, nutrition, organization, sensitivity, excretion and reproduction. So a cell is the smallest unit of a living organism that shows all of those characteristics. A cell is the basic functional unit of life. In multicellular organisms, cells make up tissues. This links in to the idea of characteristics of life again, in particular the characteristic of organization. Because as we can see, Organization is the way that living things are organized into cells, which we're interested in today, tissues. Tissues form organs. Organs form organ systems, individuals and populations. Most cells are microscopic. There is an exception. An ostrich egg is actually a cell, even though it is huge, bigger than a football. What do cells look like under the light microscope? Let's have a look at an animal cell. Now you might be forgiven for thinking that this drawing is a drawing of a fried egg. Do not make this mistake. Imagine a plastic bag full of watery jelly with a golf ball inside. That would be a more accurate picture of a cell. The plastic bag represents the boundary of the cell or the cell membrane. The cell membrane is like a sieve or it is porous, it is semi-permeable, it has little holes in it that control the passage of substances in and out of the cell. It will allow small things like oxygen to pass in and out and water to pass in and out freely, but it will prevent the passage of larger chemicals. The golf ball is representing the nucleus of the cell. This controls the cell's activities. The watery jelly is the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is the site of chemical reactions. Can you hear the sound? Cyt and cytoplasm. Lastly, an animal cell will have small vacuoles. Not always and these are often not labelled in science books. I like to include them though. These vacuoles can store sap, they store sugars and salts. What about a plant cell under the microscope? Well, when we examine a plant cell under the light microscope, again we see the parts that we've already mentioned. Plant cells have a cell membrane which is semi-permeable. The cell membrane is the boundary of the cell. 
It separates the interior of the cell from the external environment. Again, we see the nucleus. The plant cell is filled with a watery jelly, again called cytoplasm, which acts as the site or the medium for chemical reactions. Now we start to see some slight differences, or should I say some large differences. The first difference is that plant cells have large vacuoles. Vacuoles store salts and sugars and help to support the cell and hold it up. Rather like a big cushion helps to support your back when you're sitting on the couch. Another difference is the outside of the cell has a cell wall. If you can imagine putting the plastic bag of watery jelly into a lunchbox, that would be a good model to represent a plant cell. The structure is different. For those of you able for a bit more, cell walls are made of cellulose, which is a polysaccharide. It has a structure rather like a scaffolding or the Eiffel Tower, a rigid framework giving strength to the cell, however, allowing the passage of everything through it. It is fully permeable. Try to get the concept that even though it is stronger than the cell membrane, due to its structure, it will allow the free passage of chemicals in and out of the cell. Lastly, the plant cell has structures called chloroplasts. S in chloroplast, S for structures. And the chloroplast is the structure that contains the green color called chlorophyll. Plant cells have large numbers of these chloroplasts which allow them to carry out photosynthesis or make their own food. So what are the functions of the cell components or the cell parts? Don't forget a little heads up. When we are doing functions, we must use action words. Look at all the functions in this table. Controls, acts, controls, gives, carries, stores. These are all action words and have to be used when talking about functions. Let's look at each part. Well, as we said already, the function of the nucleus is to control the cell's activities. It acts like the brain of the cell, if you like. The cytoplasm acts as the medium or the place or the site for chemical reactions. The cell membrane controls what enters and leaves the cell. It is semi-permeable. It acts like a sieve. It will let the passage of small molecules in and out of the cell, but not large ones. S for sieve, S for semi-permeable. The cell wall gives the cell strength and support. For those of you able for a bit more, it is made of cellulose. The chloroplasts carry out photosynthesis. As a reminder, photosynthesis is the way that plants use light to make their own food. The vacuoles store sugars and salts. They also help to maintain the cell's shape. When they are fully swollen up, they give the cell turgor, meaning they keep the cell swollen or rigid. Vacuoles can also support the cell, as we've said before, acting like a cushion supporting your back when you are sitting up. However, I find from experience that people often model the function of the cell wall being support and strength with the function of the vacuole, which is support and maintaining cell shape. So in a nutshell, what is the position and the function of the cell membrane? Well, the cell membrane is the boundary of the cell, whether it is around an animal cell or whether it's around a plant cell. However, in plant cells, bacterial cells, and yeast cells, there is a cell wall 
outside the cell membrane. So the cell membrane separates the interior of the cell from the outside environment. And as we've said before, the function of the cell membrane is that it controls what enters and leaves the cell. It is semi-permeable. It acts like a sieve. This is a vital concept for the future understanding of biology. So what are the differences between animal cells and plant cells? Read the question as a little heads up. Here we are talking about animal cells first and plant cells second. So the animal cells are on the left hand side of this table. So animal cells do not have a cell wall whereas plant cells do. Animal cells do not have chloroplasts, the structures that contain chlorophyll which is the green color whereas plant cells have chloroplasts, they have these structures with chlorophyll inside. Animal cells do not have a large vacuole, whereas plant cells have a large vacuole. Now, as a heads up, make sure when you read the question that you realize, in this particular case, the we are talking about the animal cell first, but in the exam, they might put the plant cell and ask you for the differences between plant cells and animal cells. And if you tear into the question and start saying that they do not have a cell wall, they don't have chloroplasts, they don't have a large vacuole, then what you are saying first will be taken to refer to the plant cell, which is mentioned first. And then, of course, you will be incorrect. Does that make sense? So just be aware of this. And there you have it. Now that we have reached the end of our lesson, have we achieved our objective? Do you know the components of the animal and plant cell as seen under the light microscope? And can you describe their functions? Can you indicate in both cases, the position and function of the cell membrane.